We're bike. Talking about rookies. I'm going to rip right off my man Noah's video on Sunday, league winning rookie running backs, and continue down the path of righteousness, brothers. Sorry, I'm out here preaching because I'm wearing jorts for the first time. You know what I mean? Tuck it, baby. We're tucked. And we're ready to yell about rookies that your idiot league mates are not going to know about. We're not going to talk about the quarterbacks because they all know about them. We're not going to talk about the top running backs off the board and Brees Hall and all those guys because everybody knows about them. Here are some rookies that I think will actually have an impact in your season-long draft, your season-long league this year, despite being relatively unknown. They're not unknown to you because I've been yelling about them all summer, but if you're new to the research of fantasy football, welcome. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you tuck your shirt in, you stop yelling, and you get ready. This is hard to do from all the way back here. You get ready to eat. And just a reminder, our season-long draft guide, everything you need for your fantasy football draft, goes live on August 1st of next week. It has our rankings. It's got our all-fade list, our must-draft list, and you know a million other things in there. So to get that, you can do one of two things. Either go to bdge.co and just purchase it there, but the easiest and the cheapest way to get it is by going to prizepicks.com and using code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more for the first time. A lot of you guys keep asking, you know, if I'm not in an eligible state for prize picks, how do I get it? You just go to BDGE.co. You got two options, but this is the cheapest and the least expensive and the best way to get it because you also get to play on prize picks with that money and double the revenue and they give you a 100% deposit match and life is good. Life is really good. When I get to yell in jorts, life is good. Or it could be a cry for help. I don't know. But I will cry about Rashad White. This is someone that Noah spent a lot of time talking about on Sunday's video. Rashad White is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers rookie running back. Drafted in the third round. First time I ever watched Rashad White, I fell in love with the kid. He's a big back. Six foot, 215. He's got the build to be a three down back. So he gets drafted to Tampa Bay. And one of my concerns with Rashad White, he's a little bit older, right? He played at Juco for two years. And he's kind of a raw runner, to be honest with you. He's not the most elusive. He's not the best tackle breaker, but he's very athletic. I kind of comped him to like a Kenyon Drake or almost like a Lamar Miller type where he's got the size. He's got the legit speed to have breakaway plays, but he's also really good on third downs as it relates to pass catching. Top five in yards per route run in receptions and in targets last year in college. So he could immediately come in and have a third down role. Now, the reports out of uh, Tampa Bay are obviously that Lenny's getting a little thick, and we've made a video about whether or not Uncle Lenny is the new Eddie Lacy. I'll ruin it for you. He's not. No one will ever be Eddie Lacy, but the reports aren't good. However, I still like Uncle Lenny. I'm not worried about that. However, if there is some complications, if something happens with Uncle Lenny, Rashad White is going to be the next man up. I don't care about Keyshawn Vaughn, neither should you. Joe Bernard's like 40 years old. He's not really going to make an impact this year. Rashad White is the next guy up. He's explosive. He is big. He is a great pass catcher. We just need to make sure he has the trust of Tom Brady. But he could be a guy who, you know, we're looking back next year at and we're saying, fuck, how did we not see the breakout coming? He's a guy where most of these rookie running backs, right? You got Brees Hall as the number one. You got Kenneth Walker as the number two. James Cook is an undersized guy who's going to be used as a pass catching specialist in Buffalo, which, I, you know, it's fine as a late PPR play. But the guys after that, third round and later, are all guys that if they – end up having a big role in their offense will come over the second half of the year. We always see this for rookie running backs. If you're not drafted in the first round, you typically have a chance to compete for a big role. But a lot of times the the coach just won't trust you until we get to week seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? We've seen it year over year over year over year with Miles Sanders and Javante Williams and DeAndre Swift and Cam Akers and JK Dobbin. And it just continues to happen, right? We always love the talent of a player, but doesn't always come to fruition until they get the opportunity later into the season. This could be a Rashad White guy where weeks 10, 11, 12, we're looking at him as a top 15 fantasy running back because he's in the single highest scoring offense, the single uh, highest pass rate offense, which is great for him because he's a great pass catcher. So I love Mr. Rashad White, a little bit raw, but if he can get it together, tighten up and gets the trust of Brady, he can fill himself into a really big pass catching role as the season progresses. And I feel the same way about Damian Pierce. Now, Damian Pierce is the fourth round pick for the Houston Texans. This backfield is wide open. I mean, it's like Rex Burkhead. It's Marlon Mack coming, still coming off the Achilles tear. People want to say he's two years removed from the Achilles tear. I'm sorry to break it to you. It doesn't matter how much time you've had to rest off the Achilles tear. If you have an Achilles tear, for the most part, your, uh, your ability to explode is just zapped. It's not a timing thing. It's not an ACL. It's not a quad strain. It 
It's not a timing thing. It's just the scar tissue builds up there and you just don't have the explosiveness anymore. So to think that Marlon Mack is the same Marlon Mack he was would be ridiculous. Do I think Marlon Mack will get the first chance to be the starter here? Yeah, probably because he's a veteran and Damian Pierce is a fourth round rookie. But Damian Pierce on a per play, on a per game basis, was one of the, if not the best running back in this class. I mean, when you look at what he did on a per touch basis, he had the number one overall rushing grade per Sports Info Solutions, number two in overall missed tackles forced rate behind only B. Jean the God Robinson. His breakaway run rate was in the top 20th percentile. Yards after contact per attempt, the same thing. In terms of third down playing, number four in route running grade, number 11 in yards per route run, number 15 in pass blocking grade. This man does not miss he is a guy who is 220 pounds he's a guy who is built to play on all three downs he didn't get a lot of touches at florida i am so sure that this guy is going to be a better pro than he was a college player which is not something we see often but i'm all in on this kid damian pierce to be a guy who you draft late right around 12 13 14 he's going to sit on your bench for a while you don't come fucking at me after week one after week two saying damian pierce only getting six carries a game why the fuck you tell me to draft him i'm telling you to draft him because he's going to be there for the playoff run he is going to be there when things actually matter. He is going to be there down the stretch because he's going to continuously carve out a role as a pass catcher, as a pass blocker, as an early down runner, as a creator. He's a yak guy. He is a fucking missed force tackle guy. Like he does it all, I'm telling you. And now he finally goes into a backfield where they have the opportunity to give it to him to show us. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't see a ton of other rookie running backs that have a lot of opportunity off the rip. Zamir White is cool. I think he can have a role next year when they move on from Josh Jacobs. I like Isaiah Spiller a lot. He's a 220-pound pass-catching running back that goes to the Chargers. Obviously, Eckler is going to be the guy there, but they've wanted to clearly split the carries there in L.A. since Eckler has you know taken over as a lead back. They've tried it with Larry Roundtree. They've tried it with Josh Kelly. Both those guys stink. Isaiah Spiller is a much better player than those guys are. This is an offense that top five in pace, top five in plays, top five in scoring, uh, an amazing quarterback. They have a really, really good ascending offensive line. So I think even if Isaiah Spiller only gets 150 to 160 touches this year, he might end up getting 10 to 12 goal line carries and turning that into eight to nine rushing touchdowns. So I think Spiller's got some really nice standalone value in a strong offense. Tyler Algier is another one to keep your name on. He's the uh, to keep your eye on. Fifth round rookie running back out of BYU. Monstrous numbers at BYU. I think that a lot of the times comes from playing the competition that BYU plays. Uh, but he goes to Atlanta where the backfield is completely wide open. They get rid of Mike Davis. Coral Patterson is clearly not going to be the workhorse here in Atlanta this year. From a running back perspective, they'll probably still use him a lot as a weapon and in the slot and out wide and whatever. But Tyler Algier has a path to be the starting running back by week eight or later. He's not a guy that I'm necessarily uh, in love with, Tyler Algier. He's more of like a bruiser. Some people have comped his ceiling to like a James Conner, which I can understand because James Conner has never really been an efficient back in the NFL, but he's given a lot of opportunities. He can catch the ball if, if the ball is thrown to him, but he's not going to like make a ton of plays on top of what he has. But if given the opportunity, Algier could be that type of guy. I will fair. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll warn you now, like even if Algier becomes a starting running back and he's getting 15 to 20 touches a game, this is a terrible offensive line. This is an offense that's not going to move because we have Marcus Mariota at quarterback. It's not a high upside opportunity. It's not a high upside situation because Algier is not necessarily a creator of his own. So those are the rookie running backs I would certainly keep an eye on that you can get very, very late in drafts. Um, and you should be drafting with your double digit round picks. When we move over to the wide receiver position, I mean, most of your league mates are going to know the top guys that were picked Drake London, Garrett Wilson. I've made a video about Chris Olave, who I think is one of the more underrated rookies in this class, although he was a third rookie off the board. He's kind of under the radar because Garrett Wilson was the more well known Ohio State wide receiver. Chris Olave goes to the Saints, which we have no real idea what's happening with Michael Thomas. I think Olave has an outside chance to be the single best rookie wide receiver this year. Statistically, he is such a crispy route runner. Um, and I think Winston has shown the propensity to just chuck it up to whoever he thinks is open down the field. And that will be Olave. Michael Thomas has never been a downfield guy. They don't have any other weapons that play downfield like Olave does. And Olave is just such a good separator um, on the outside and in the slot. I think he's going to be used all over the place and get onto the field immediately as a three down starter. So I'm looking to target Chris Olave, you know, round nine, round 10, when possible. A lot of you guys are going to get excited about Christian Watson, and I know I made kind of like an anti Alan Lazard video yesterday, but that does not mean I'm really in on Watson. It probably means I'm just overall down on this passing offense. Um, Rodgers, listen, he's been incredible the last two years, but don't forget the two years prior to that when he was throwing for 25, 26 touchdowns, and we thought he was kind of like over the hump. I think there's a chance that this offense just goes completely through Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, run, 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 slot pass, slot pass, run, 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 without with very little separation on the outside. So Christian Watson 
listen, if he keeps dipping, he is dipping and dipping and falling and falling and fur falling further down drafts. So like at some point, you know, maybe in the 12th, 13th round, we take a shot on Christian Watson, but I am not sure I see the upside there that a lot of people see just from like a pure athleticism standpoint with uh, who Watson is a, as a prospect, but he should be on your radar as should Sky Moore, the slot wide receiver for the Chiefs who got drafted in the second round. They've got a lot of targets to replace because Tyreek Hill is gone. They signed Juju, they signed MVS, but like Juju hasn't been good in four years. MVS has never actually been good. Neither has Nicole Hardman. All these guys are like field stretchers outside of Juju. So Sky Moore and Juju, I think, will probably eat up most of the targets over the middle of the field because Mahomes is going to get sick and fucking tired of throwing the guys who can't separate from their defensive backs in MBS and Nicole Hardman. And then it becomes just like a Kelsey Moore, Juju, Kelsey Moore, Juju, Kelsey Moore, Juju over and over and over again. So Sky Moore is a guy who's getting drafted three, four, five rounds after Juju, and I would much rather take him. He's very uh, keen to this year's Elijah Moore. He is a little bit, he's not even that really that small, 190, 195 pounds, plays a lot in the slot, but on the outside, he was a fantastic separator as well. He was a guy who um, can get away from man, can get away from press, can get away from zone, and that type of separation skill can play anywhere in any offense, and now you attach him to Patrick Mahomes, so I think Sky Moore is going to be a baller. I think Jalen Tolbert's going to be a baller because we have Amari Cooper gone. We have Michael Gallup, who's probably going to start the year on the pup list, and I think Jalen Tolbert Basically, all reports are pointing towards him being the wide receiver two entering the year. Again, this is a an offense that scores top five. This is an offense that runs plays at a pace that's in the top five. This is an offense that has a pass rate in the top five. Dak is going to throw and throw and throw and throw and throw. And CeeDee Lamb is going to catch and catch and catch and catch and catch. But he can't be the only weapon in this offense that catches balls. So we love some Jalen Tolbert this year, like David Bell, but not as long as Deshaun Watson is not on the field. Uh, Khalil Shakir is a little bit interesting. If reports come out that he might win the slot role, uh, they have Jameson Crowder, Isaiah McKenzie was re-signed and they said that he's a starter there. Um, maybe Shakir gets on, on the field a little bit there, but you know, I don't even know why I fucking included him in this. Kyle Phillips is the other name. I think we should keep an eye on here in Tennessee. He's out of UCLA. He was a fifth round pick for the Titans. Kyle Phillips is kind of like a little bit of a Hunter Renfro. I think without that like phone booth, uh, footwork type thing going on, which might make Hunter Renfro completely irrelevant and therefore Kyle Phillips maybe. But Kyle Phillips is a guy that I remember having uh, Brett Coleman on the channel earlier in the spring talking about underrated rookies that most people don't know about. Kyle Phillips is one of his guys and Kyle Phillips is a really, really good separator. And we're talking about an offense where like, sure, Robert Woods is there, but he's also a 30 year old coming back from an ACL tear. Like, sure, maybe he gets on the field on week in week one, but is he as explosive as he was? Like, we like guys two years removed from the ACL tear. Is he as uh, is he as good and explosive and as sure-footed as he was last year? Probably not. And if he did, if he does start off strong, like, he might fade over the sec second half of the year. Like, we saw, like, Emmanuel Sanders last year. Obviously, different injury, but same type of, like, older age. That stuff tends to be a problem for longevity and durability over the course of a season. So I could see a world where Kyle Phillips starts running routes at a 60 to 70% clip and just being a dump off guy for Ryan Tannehill because they don't have many other options. Like obviously Traylon Burks is there, but we haven't heard a lot of good reports out of camp um, on him either. So Phillips would be the last guy I would keep an eye on. He's going to be a waiver guy probably down the list later in the season. And tight ends, there's probably like six guys I like at the tight end position. None that I really think make an impact in year one. I know in Denver, they said Greg Dolchich is going to compete with Albert O for the starting job. I don't buy it. I don't buy that Dolchich will have more than like 300 receiving yards this year anyways. Obviously, that's super relevant as it relates to fantasy. Uh, McBride is behind Ertz. Jelani Woods is a huge fucking target who might see some good red zone looks, but Jeremy Ruckert I like. Kate Otten, uh, now that they signed Kyle Rudolph there in Tampa Bay, is kind of irrelevant. I like Daniel Bellinger out there in New York, but none of those guys are going to make impacts in year one. But those uh, wide receivers and running backs are guys that I legitimately think will be on waiver wire lists at some point throughout the season that are more unknown Guys, as it relates to like your normal ass fantasy football league, you know, the Rashad Whites, the Damian Pierce, the Isaiah Spillers, who, of course, if you've been following fantasy for this long into the summer, then you know all these guys like the back of your fucking hand, but your idiot league mates will not. And therefore, you take advantage of them like their children and like they're a blind guy with money sitting out there. You stick your hand and you take all his fucking money. That's what we're doing in fantasy football in 2022. We're taking money from blind people. All right. I love y'all. Make sure you go sign up on prize picks for the draft guide. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new and I will see y'all tomorrow because I love you.